So, I'm going to be finding the limit uh, as x approaches 0 to e to the x minus e to the negative x minus 2x over x minus sine x. Um, uh, it, it could look uh, problematic and it could be confusing, but it really isn't. And um, to do this, you're really going to need to be strong in Lost Middle's rule. Lost Middle rule isn't really that hard. Um, maybe I might just do a video just on Lost Middle's rule. But um, yeah, so let's get started. Hopefully, um, doing some difficult problems like this will help you uh, in your studies um, when you're preparing for an exam. So the limit, the first thing you want to do is just plug in zero. When it's when you plug in zero, anything to the zero power is just one. So this would be one minus one, which is zero. And it's going to be minus two times zero, which is zero. So the top will be zero and the bottom will be zero minus sine of zero is just zero. Um, so it's going to be zero over zero. So we're going to have to apply Lospital's rule in this um, from the get-go. And uh, we'll see what happens. So when we take the derivative of the numerator, and, re and just a reminder, when you're using Lospital's, you're not going to treat this as a quotient rule. You're going to just do them separately and put them on top of each other. So the derivative of e to the x, the limit, as x approaches 0, e to the x, the derivative is simply just e to the x. Now the derivative of e to the negative x is going to be um, uh, e to the negative x is going to be, um, you're going to drop the, ne uh, you're going to treat this as the same thing, so you're just going to repeat it, e to the negative x. And this is chain rule. So then you take the derivative of the top. Derivative of what's inside the brackets. You could treat that as inside the brackets of negative x. Well, that's just equal to 1, right? So this becomes negative e to the negative x. So we're going to write that here. Now, that's just for the e to the negative x. We have a negative in the front. So negative times a negative is going to give you a positive. So this will be positive e to the minus x. And the derivative of negative 2x, well, that's just going to be negative 2. So that stays the same. And then we're going to... We're going to take the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of x, that's just 1, and then sine x, sine x. What's the derivative of sine x? That's cosine x. So you leave the negative sign there, and this becomes negative cosine x, okay? And then we're going to plug it in. After you do the last bit of the rule, you just plug in and see what happens. So... When you plug in 0 here and 0 here, you still get 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. Minus 2, that's 0. Let's see what happens on the denominator. Cosine of 0 is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So we're going to apply Lospital's rule again. So when you're applying Lospital's rule, same thing. You take the derivative. All right. So... The limit as x approaches 0, what's the derivative of e to the x? Well, that's just e to the x. What's the derivative of e to the negative x? Well, we have that right here. That's negative e to the negative x. This is positive, positive, and a negative. That's going to come back to being a negative. Negative e to the negative x. The derivative of a constant, meaning that it doesn't have a variable connected to it, is going to be 0. So we'll just leave that alone. And that's going to be over <coughs> the derivative of 1. Well, that's a constant. So it's going to be 0. The derivative of cosine x. 
the derivative of cosine x is equal to negative sine x. So we have a negative. A negative minus a negative is going to be a positive. So this is going to turn into positive sine. Positive sine x on the bottom. And notice you just as you keep taking the derivative, it gets smaller and more simplified and it's going to eventually <coughs> um decrease to the point where you're going to be able to either get an infinity, get um, an actual number, and find out what the limit actually is. So if we plug in zero here, we're still going to get one minus one, which is zero. Sine of zero is zero. So we're, we're getting zero. But that's okay because we have Lospital's rule to continue to simplify it more down uh more so that you're able to um finally derive a limit so when you use Lospital's rule again <clears throat> what's the derivative of e to the x well that's just e to the x it's not going to change e to the negative x well, e to the negative x, the derivative is negative e to the negative x. But we have a minus here. So that minus and the other minus will become a positive. So this becomes positive e to the minus x. And that's going to be all over the derivative of sine. The derivative of sine. We know that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x. A lot of people get it confused. When is it negative? When is it positive? Right? And then you're dealing with derivatives and integrals. And so you start getting complicated. Easiest way is to remember the derivative. And when you're doing the integrals, just do the opposite. Right? So sine x is cosine x. Another hint. Um, all the trigonometric functions that start with c, the derivative is going to be negative. So sine isn't, doesn't start with c. So it's not going to be negative. So this bottom part will be cosine x. All right, looks like we're getting somewhere now. <clears throat> All right. The limit as x approaches 0. So we're going to put in 0 again. 0 right here. Any number to the 0 power is going to be 1. So 1, any number to the zero power is gonna be one. So one plus one is two. Cosine of zero is one, one. So therefore, the answer, the limit as x approaches zero of this function, e to the x minus e to the negative x minus two x over x minus sine x is going to be 2, all right? Uh, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And um, good luck on your studies.